Well, as we continue looking at 1 Peter, I want to move from verses 3-4 into verse 5 in a moment. But just to kind of back it up a little bit, uh, we left off with Peter telling us that we have a new life because we've experienced a new birth. Uh, we have a new hope, which is a living hope, which expresses itself in a new way of living our life in this present world. And really, we live it for another goal. That our goal is not to have our best life now. Our goal is not to become successful as the world would define success, which is always, I think, one of the biggest traps for Americans because we're kind of built into this idea of better, bigger and better all the time. And instead realizing that the real goal is to leave this world and to be in the presence of God. So it, I used to always say things, we're not made for time, we're made for eternity. And I think that really I've amended that a little bit because we are made for time. The reason I have a body is so that I can function in the concept of time, the material world. But I'm made for this, but I'm not, but this is not my final destiny. It's kind of like uh, many times I, I get in an airplane and I fly different places in the world. Um, but you see, before I do that, I get into my car and I drive my car to the airport. And then I get out of my car and I get on the airplane and it takes me into the sky. And it's the same kind of way, if I can use that kind of illustration, that our body is like that car that we drive through this life to get us to where we're really going. Death is kind of like going to the airport. And heaven is what happens when we get on the plane and we go to our real destination. My whole point, I know it's not a perfect metaphor, but bear with me, but not really, my, the whole point is that that becomes the, the objective, really the goal of our life. And I think as Christians, we often miss that. When I find myself getting very discouraged and frustrated because of things I have to deal with in this life, I know you know what I'm talking about. Well, when you are going through those times and you get kind of glum and disappointed, and even, even go into a depression, you have to realize that what's probably happened is you've lost sight of what is the, the prize of your high calling, as Paul put it to the Philippians. You, you've, you've begun to make uh, a good life here, your goal, uh, where everything kind of turns out the way you want it to be. And the idea of that I'm only here temporarily and ultimately my goal is to be in heaven with God where I can shed the imperfections and the fallibilities of my human carcass and I can be clothed with the purity and the righteousness of a new body made in the likeness of Christ, where the lust of my flesh will be to do his will, that my every thought will be holy, my every action will be honoring and glorious to the kingdom of God, and I will have trouble restraining myself from praising and glorifying his name day and night because I am in such awe and wonder at the spectacle of being in his presence." That's really what my life is going to be about, what, where I'm, I should be heading. And when I do get cast down, I realize I've just forgotten what this is all about. I have to share with you kind of a little self-disclosure that every Sunday I come home after having preached uh, my sermons, and quite honestly, I come home pretty much mentally and emotionally and physically exhausted, more so as I get older. You know, I don't have as much uh, <laughs> gas in the tank as I did when I was a younger man. But the whole point is I find myself going into a slump, and I know why I do, because I am emotionally, mentally depleted physically depleted oftentimes as well, so that I recognize that's a, that's a temporary thing and I don't take it very seriously. I just know that I need to get some nourishment in my body. I need to get some relaxation. I need some distraction. Uh, my wife and I often love to find a good movie to watch. And by the way, I might put a plug in here. I am not a fan of CNN. You probably would believe that. But they've just done a special on the, uh, the captives um, Anderson Cooper did a special, CNN special, on uh, uh, really a biopic on people who were captured by Hamas and who have come out and they tell the story of their experience. Um, it's really, really gives a tremendous insight into how horrible Hamas is, how evil their works are, and uh, it's very, very touching, and I hope that it will kind of stimulate prayer in your heart to pray for those who are still being held captive. But excuse me for that digression. But what Paul does is he goes on to say that as we face the reality of the hardships and the difficulties that come in our faith with Christ, he adds in verse 5 that we are shielded through faith by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. 
And it's interesting, this word shielded means that basically you're attended to, you're surrounded, you're protected. It's really in many ways a kind of a, a, a police term or a guardian terminology or even a military term of the idea that you have this guard posted around you to protect you and to keep you from the harm that the enemy wants to bring into your life. And he says, basically saying, you have to understand that God's power has shielded you. So in a very real sense, I believe that God has dispatched angels not only to attend to my needs, not only to surround me, but to protect me from the evil that the wicked one would bring into my life. So that in a very real way, my wife and I regularly pray that God would post his angels around us. He would bind the works of the evil one. I mean, there's been times where my wife and I have started to get into this little tizzy fit, this tiff between ourselves, arguing about something, and it'll suddenly occur to one of us, wait a minute, what's going on? And we realize that somehow we have given access into our lives by evil spirits that are whispering naughty things into our heads. And we just have to stop and say, God, forgive us. We bind the evil one. We, we reject him in Jesus' name. Not in our name and not in our strength, but we cast him out in Jesus' name and we forbid him to have access into our lives, into our home, into our church, into our community. I play, pray God's covering over our church, over our home, over even when we get into the car and we drive from place to place, we always just say a short prayer. God, keep us safe and attend to us and keep us from harm. Because we realize, we believe that God has chosen to shield us by his power. And we trust in that. Does that mean that nothing ever bad happens to me? No. Sometimes God allows things. He allows things to happen in our lives to teach us humility, uh, to give us an experience that other people go through, to teach us how to have compassion. I think that's been real to me that I remember when I used to do funerals a lot. And uh, I mean, I felt bad for people, but you never really understand the, the sorrow and the feeling of loss and heartbreak that people have when they lose a family member or a loved one, a close friend, until you've gone through that journey yourself and lost those people who are close to you. It changes the whole way. I, I have a deeper compassion. So on one hand, I wish I had never lost people that I love, even though I know that's inevitable. But at the same time, I thank God because it taught me to be sensitive to the pain that those people are going through. And I would even say that early in my ministry, I, I wasn't rude. I was kind and tried to be understanding, but I didn't really weep with those who weep. Now, when I do a funeral, it's very hard for me not to cry as I see the, the sorrow that people are going through. I, I feel their pain in a very real sense and not in a Bill Clinton political sense. I mean, I really do feel their pain. And that's what happens. Sometimes God allows things into our lives for that very purpose, to so that we can be able to relate. He can allow you to go through financial difficulties, even losing a business or even having a, a marriage fall apart, unfortunately. All those things are horrific, but nonetheless, we, can, we not only can come through those and survive them, but we can learn a great deal. They make us wiser. We become more insightful people. And it's not just a matter of keeping us from going astray, but rather teaching us, as Job came to learn, that in the deepest, darkest of circumstances, God is always able to meet us. That no matter how low we go in a situation, God can go still lower and further. And we find that he's still holding us. He's still shielding us. Because keep in mind, if you read the book of Job, you remember that Satan was allowed only to go so far. And he was only allowed to go as far as God wanted him to go because there were things he wanted Job to learn so that he would write the book of Job so you and I could read the book and learn them vicariously as opposed to have to always go through them on our own. I like to read the book of Job because it reminds me that I don't want God to write my life into the book of Job. <laughs> I want to learn from his experience. So that's part of what scripture is. It, it lets us learn things vicariously so that we don't have to go through them all. But nonetheless, God let Job go through a horrific time so that he might learn about the nature of God and the goodness of God. And uh, that's one of the things I just love. And I, le I love reading the book of Job because of those deep lessons. But one of the things Paul goes on to say, he says that God's power will shield us because until the coming of salvation, which in that context means until we leave this world. Not that we have to wait till we get saved, but salvation becomes fully expressed in our passing from this world into the next, that we become shed of this earthly carcass. And he says it's ready to be revealed 
even in the last time, referring to, of course, the second coming. So God's talking about his deliverance that, that we are awaiting and it's guaranteed to us and uh, has not yet fully arrived, but we know it's coming because it's promised to us in Jesus Christ. Well, one more to go this week and then you, you can have the weekend off. But uh, look forward to tomorrow. God bless you and go in his grace.